Welcome to Speed Data, quick conversations with cybersecurity leaders. I'm your host, Megan Garza, and today we have an award-winning guest joining us. As a Chambers-rated insurance recovery litigator, Scott Goddess has helped his clients recover under nearly every type of insurance policy on the books, including coverage for data breaches, business email compromises, and cyber attacks. Scott is co-chair of Barnes & Thornburg LLP's Insurance Recovery and Counseling and Data Security and Privacy Practices. When he's not working to get insurers to cover losses due to cyber attacks, ransomware, and data privacy events, Scott has been a peer reviewer for Jurametrics, the Journal of Law, Science, and Technology, and has been a guest lecturer at Duke University. Scott, your resume of publications and accolades is one of the most impressive I've ever seen. You've been quoted in 192 publications, received 31 honors and awards. What made you want to go into insurance recovery for cybersecurity matters? Well, I wish I could tell you that I picked insurance recovery as an affirmative thing, but I had ended up at a boutique law firm when I switched practices. A few years into my practice, I was with a different group that decided that each one of us should have a subspecialty. And I thought, well, this is an insurance recovery enough of a subspecialty, but what did I know? And so given the options of things to do, I chose computers, technology, and what was really barely a thing, data privacy, back in 2008. And so I thought it would be a really nice fit with both my interests, my experience, and my background. And I wrote a white paper on insurance for data privacy risks. And shortly thereafter, I started getting client work from inside the firm and outside the firm. And it's been anywhere between 125% to 75% of my practice year after year since 2008. And you mentioned it's, you know, niche. Cyber insurance recovery might not be a topic that most people are familiar with. What would people be surprised to learn about working in insurance recovery? Insurance recovery is significantly more interesting than most people would think. Virtually any litigation or cyber attack based loss has insurance implications. People have insurance policies and policyholders rarely understand what's included within the policy and cyber insurance in particular. It is the least understood of insurance policies and that's already a low bar. And so it leads to questions and frustration amongst corporate policyholders when the insurance carrier hires outside counsel to say, this is not covered or we only cover a sliver of this, or if you had only done the following, then you would get better coverage. And so that's where I come in and reevaluate the position asserted by the carrier and, and discuss with them why their position is too aggressive and too narrow of a read. And so it not only is it interesting in terms of the types of matters that come up, it's interesting because it is sophisticated work and it takes um, a lot of time and attention to figure out how to get from where the insurance company says no to where the policyholder wants to be. And I bet people and organizations are very happy to have you in their corner. What is your favorite aspect of your role? It is always nice to feel like I'm wearing the white hat and working with policyholders who are coming to me, it almost always a situation where they are frustrated and uh, disappointed in terms of how the insurance company has reacted to them. And talking through the issues with them and figuring out a creative solution to get where they want to be and then go from a position of no coverage to ultimately a resolution of it and bringing in insurance money where the policyholder thought they were going to be covered in the first place and changing the entire conversation. It sounds like you really enjoy your day-to-day role. If you weren't in insurance recovery, what would you be doing? I've been pretty tech-focused, tech-savvy person. I got a really nice compliment a few years back where I was talking with somebody at a tech company. He said, are you sure that you're an outside lawyer at a law firm? Because you seem more like a tech guy than anything else. And so uh, having worked on and done some programming in college back in the Stone Ages, it would have been nice to have that as an alternative career if law wasn't what ended up being my calling. So in your opinion, what should people know about cyber insurance that they don't. The policies vary quite a bit. And compared to other insurance programs and policies where there is a lot of standardization, cyber insurance remains a different type of policy, a different type of offer. There are some basics that people should come to expect when buying a standalone cyber insurance policy. So for example, coverage for the cost of forensic investigation, notifications, and ideally defending against lawsuits and class actions. But after that, there is a wide variety 
of policy terms, provisions, limitations, and exclusions. And some carriers are writing coverages that are much broader, coverage for different kinds of risks. But at bottom, when people are marketed cyber insurance, they are marketed as a panacea for things cyber related. But the people that market them and the people that handle the claims are not the same people. And so it's worth spending some time to sit down and reviewing what's actually within the policy, seeing even in the declarations pages, if there are limitations on the coverage and where there might be sub limits or lower limits of coverage overall. And you made a joke about the Stone Age. I doubt it's that long ago, but how has the cyber insurance industry changed since you began your career? The earliest on when I worked for that online services company, they had a technology errors and omissions policy written back in 2000. Compared to a policy that is written in 2023, we're in a completely different universe. And so compared to what it used to be, now there are specific coverage grants for cyber extortion and ransomware and paying a ransom. Those things just weren't in the marketplace 20 plus years ago or 15 years ago. Because I imagine that as different attack tactics have evolved, people didn't know back then the width and the depths that they could potentially be at risk. Certainly not insurance buyers. And as the criminals have gotten more clever and have figured out ways to get money uh, more directly, even more directly than they had in the past, and they've changed the types of attacks and their attack factors, the earliest sorts of attacks and cyber events was to take things that could be resold, whether it be health records or payment card data or other things where there seemed to be an online dark web marketplace, that sort of information. Now criminals can force people to pay them directly or defraud them into paying them directly. And they're so smart. Imagine if they use that smart for good. <laughs> that would be, the world could be such a better place. Indeed. Lastly, I know that our audience would love to hear your take. What do you think it takes to be a successful leader? It takes training and working with your team and building your team up. And ultimately recognizing that you are part of a team and that working with every member of it so that you can reach a common goal and making certain that your team understands that goal and is invested and spending the time to get them invested is super important. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Scott. Uh, if our audience has any questions they would like to see asked during a future episode of Speed Data, please email me at pr at Have a great rest of your week, Scott. Thanks and you as well. 